Arsenal have broken their transfer record and signed Declan Rice for £105 million. And this is how they did it. How they outbid Manchester City and how they convinced Rice himself that his future lay in North London. This is the story of Arsenal's biggest ever Premier League signing. It was Declan Rice or bust for Arsenal this summer. He was crucial to Arteta's vision, and every other transfer target the club had was inextricably linked to Rice as the centrepiece. Arsenal had long identified him as the crucial missing piece of their jigsaw, but the pursuit began in earnest in January of 2023. Having consulted Arsenal's England contingent of Bukayo Saka and Aaron Ramsdale for insight into Rice's personality and leadership qualities, it only strengthened Arteta's desire to bring him to North London. And he'd actually wanted to complete a deal in January, but it was impossible to do so, both financially and because West Ham were fighting relegation at the time and wouldn't consider a sale. Instead, Jorginho was signed as a short-term depth option, and in the weeks that followed, Arsenal refocused on Rice. The Athletic can reveal it was a recent face-to-face -face meeting between Arteta, sporting director Edu Gaspar, and Rice that convinced the England midfielder just how intent they were on securing his signature. Arteta and Edu made a granularly detailed presentation to Rice, explaining the project, the role he had to play in it, and the footage of him which had convinced them of his worth. And they ended their overture by putting the ball in Rice's court. The train was leaving, they told him. Was he getting on board? Now, Rice's representatives had meetings with several big clubs, but none were in the same arena as Arsenal when it came to the detail and personalization of the pitch. The 24-year-old was ranked so highly on so many different aspects of Arsenal's recruitment grading system that Arteta almost had a book full of reports on him. It's why he was so passionate about this signing, and that came across to the player when he was explaining what his number six role would entail. So Arsenal were confident coming into the summer window that they'd established a good working rapport with their West Ham counterparts. The first official move came on June the 14th when Arsenal placed an opening offer worth £65 million plus £15 million of add-ons. That was, of course, rejected, but dialogue had been established between Arsenal executive Tim Lewis and West Ham counterpart Karen Brady, who'd spoken at the Premier League AGM in Hampshire earlier that day. A larger bid of £75 million plus £15 million followed on June the 20th, and while that was turned down, it really remained a one-horse race until Manchester City entered with an £80 million plus £10 million of add-ons bid on June the 25th. A £65 million deal for Chelsea's Kai Havertz was all but complete by then, and the entire tactical remodelling of Arteta's midfield had been predicated on the German playing alongside Rice. Arteta sees Rice as having the athleticism and ball-winning ability needed to complement Havertz and Martin Erdegaard. And Arsenal had also burned some bridges with the Brighton hierarchy in January, after their persistent pursuit of Moises Caicedo, so there wasn't really a fallback option at this point. Arsenal were dismayed with City's offer, and they knew that they had to get close to West Ham's valuation. And Arsenal's decision-making process is more bureaucratic than at some other clubs, as names and figures have to go up the chain of command from the scouting system to Arteta, Edu, Garlic, and then on to the majority owners, the Cronke family in the United States, before any official move can be signed off. It's then communicated back down through the hierarchy in what is designed to be a model with checks and balances, but can be perceived as too leaden for the fast pace of the transfer window. But on June the 27th, they knocked City out of the running. A package of £105 million was enough for the conversation to be moved to the final stage of talks on payment terms, and City weren't willing to match the offer and so pulled out of the race. Royce was heading to Arsenal. And a big part of their initial attraction to him showed during his final season at West Ham, which ended with him lifting the Europa Conference League trophy. He'd given them his word that he would never hand in a transfer request to force a move, as he wanted his exit to be handled in a classy way. And even though the staff were aware this was going to be his last season, his commitment didn't fail. In fact, Rice was critical in West Ham pulling clear of the relegation places. After two players' meetings following the loss away to London rivals Tottenham Hotspur in February, which put West Ham in the relegation zone with 15 games to go, club staff saw Rice change his leadership style to try to galvanise the group. He took it upon himself to be more vocal around the training ground. He would challenge players if they weren't training hard enough as he tried to revive the team's spirit that had led them to a 7th place finish and the Europa League semi-finals the season before. 
He also went on a superb run of form in the final three months of the season, with his trademark driving runs and switches of play giving West Ham a better grip on games. It eventually led them to glory that night in Prague against Italian side Fiorentina, and to right-back colleague Vladimir Sufal claiming Rice's intervention saved West Ham's season. In a final touch, when his departure was announced, Rice published a farewell letter to the West Ham fans before embarking on the next stage of his career. And while the saga of his transfer did appear to drag, in reality Arsenal managed to complete the biggest deal of the summer, a new club transfer record, in time for Rice to be part of their pre-season tour to the United States. Miguel Arteta's hope will be that the missing part of his midfield is now on board. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.